Hi, I'm Jackie from IELTSJackie.com. Welcome to this video on how to answer matching sentence ending questions. This type of question doesn't come up as often as some other types of IELTS reading questions, but you need to know how to answer it in case you do get one. To make sure that you're well prepared, I cover five key things in this video. An explanation, the skills you'll need, key tips, a proven strategy to answer this type of question, and a sample question with answers. First, the explanation. The instructions will contain two lists, a list of incomplete sentences and a list of possible sentence endings. Your task is to match them together based on the information in the reading text. There will be more sentence endings than beginnings, so you won't need them all. Here's a sample question from a past test paper, so that you can see how it's set out. The incomplete sentences are numbered 18 to 21, and the sentence endings labelled A to F. In this example, there are two more possible endings than there are incomplete sentences. This type of question tests your reading ability in several areas. You need to be able to scan for keywords, recognise grammatical structures, identify synonyms and paraphrasing, and use context to make predictions. I'll explain how each skill is important when I go through the strategy in detail. First though, I want to give you some tips. Tip 1. The answers appear in the same order in the text as the order of the list of incomplete sentences. This is important to know as it will help you to locate the answers quickly. Tip 2. The most effective way to select the correct answers is by a process of elimination. I'll show you how. Tip 3. Don't read the text until you've studied the incomplete sentences and the sentence endings. And tip 4. You don't need to read the whole text in detail, just the relevant sentences. All the sentence endings will appear in the text, but not all will match one of the incomplete sentences. Tip 6. Synonyms and paraphrasing will be used. Remember, you're matching meaning, not the exact words. And tip 7. The grammatical structure of the two halves of the sentence must match. If they don't, you have the wrong match. This is a very important clue to finding the correct matches. Now we come to the strategy. This is the method I find most effective in answering matching sentence ending questions. I'll show you how it works in practice in the sample test question. Start by reading the incomplete sentences. Try to understand what they mean. Next, highlight key words. This will help you to focus in on the meaning and identify the words you'll later scan the text for. Now start looking for possible matches. Many of the possible sentence combinations will clearly be wrong due to either meaning or grammatical structure. You can eliminate these immediately. Here's what to do. Go to the first incomplete sentence and read it carefully. Look down the list of sentence endings and note those that could be a potential match. Write their letter next to the incomplete sentence you're considering. For example, next to sentence 1, you might note that endings B, C and F are potential matches, while A and E might be possible matches for sentence 2. You'll probably spot at least one obviously correct match straight away, and certainly many that can't be correct and can be quickly eliminated. This won't take too long and you'll end up with a comprehensive list of potentially correct answers. Doing this first will narrow down your search considerably when you come to look for the right answers in the text. Having completed many past test papers in order to develop this strategy for you, I've found that I can generally predict the correct ending for about 50% of the sentences before even reading the text. 
the remainder I can usually narrow down to two possible answers. Now I'm a native English speaker of course, but you should be able to achieve almost the same level of success if you follow the strategy and heed the tips. Now it's time to find the location of the first answer in the text. Return to the first incomplete sentence and scan for the key words you identified earlier. If there are names, numbers, places or dates that you haven't already highlighted, include these as key words as they'll be easy to spot. I also found myself skimming at the same time as scanning to get a general understanding of the text. I wouldn't normally recommend skimming and scanning together as they're two separate skills, but do so if you can and it works for you. And watch out for synonyms and paraphrasing. Once you've found the right part of the text, read around the key words for the information to enable you to select the correct answer. When you've matched the endings to the sentences, double check the complete match sentence is grammatically correct, then fill in your answer sheet. Cross through the sentence ending in the list to eliminate it from further consideration. Then repeat the strategy for the remaining incomplete sentences. Remember that the rest of the answers will come in order in the text. We're now ready to work on our sample question. This question is not from a real IELTS reading test paper. I create it myself to demonstrate the strategy I've just outlined and to give you an opportunity to practice it. The text in your test will be longer, but will have a similar number of incomplete sentences and sentence endings. Here are the instructions and sentence beginnings and endings. The next two slides contain the text. I've had to divide it due to lack of space. However, I've created a PDF of the instructions and text that you can download to make them easier to work on. You'll find the link to it in the notes below this video. Here's the text. You don't need to read it yet, as we need to do some work on the sentence beginnings and endings first. So this is how I'd answer the question, my step-by-step -step strategy. First, I read all the incomplete sentences and think about their meaning. I also highlight the key words. In the first sentence I choose crocodile and ate. In the second, skeleton and kept. In the third, bones. And the fourth, geology and Germany. Next, I read the sentence endings to get their general meaning. I now start looking for possible matches and note them beside the incomplete sentences. You can see how I've done this in the slide. I found two potentially correct matches for three out of the four sentence beginnings and one clear match, which is 3b, which is bones of the early type of crocodile show some unique features. It's the only match for sentence three that makes sense and is grammatically correct. I did consider ending C resembled dolphins, but this isn't grammatically correct, so it doesn't sound quite right. I fill in my answer and cross through B to eliminate it from further consideration. I'm ready to begin looking for the locations of the other answers in the text. I go to sentence 1 and scan for the key words I highlighted earlier, which were crocodile and ate, thinking about possible synonyms as I do so. I find both crocodile and fed on, a close match to ate, in the second sentence of section 1. I now have the location of the answer, so I go back to the list of sentence endings and reread the ones I've selected as possible answers. They are C, resemble dolphins, and F, swam fast through the water. Looking at the phrase after the words fed on, which read, fast moving prey such as squid and small fish, I see that the obvious match is the sentence ending F. I check that the complete sentence is grammatically correct. It is. So I fill in my answer, cross through ending F and move on to sentence 2. 
As the answers come in order in the text, I scan on from the location of the first answer for the next pair of keywords I've chosen, which are skeleton and kept. I spot skeleton in the next paragraph, but not kept or anything that immediately seems to be a synonym. However, on skim reading this paragraph and the next one, the context of paragraph B would suggest that this is where the answer is located. I read in detail, searching for a synonym of my keyword kept. I spot housed, which is a match. I'm confident that I have the location of the answer, so go back to the list of sentence endings and reread the ones I've selected as possible answers. They are E, a museum in the town near where it was found, and G, the University of Edinburgh School of Geosciences. The first thing I notice is that there's no mention of the University of Edinburgh School of Geosciences in this paragraph, so this can't be the right answer and can be eliminated. The match must therefore be E. It's hidden in the paraphrasing, but I've got enough clues to know that it's right, so I don't waste time double checking it. I fill in my answer, check the grammar and move on. I've already found the match to sentence 3, so I can go straight on to sentence 4. If you remember, it was the sentence I was able to match when I first looked at possible pairings for the sentences. For sentence 4, I scan for the keyword Germany. It will be the easiest of the two keywords to find. I spot it in paragraph D. I now look for geology. I can't see it, but I know that it's the study of rock formation, which is in the text. I'm happy that I found the location of the answer. I now go to the two potential sentence endings and look for matching keywords and meaning in these. I've got A is believed to be 150 million years ago and D was laid down when the area was underwater. Reading the paragraph in detail, I can see no mention of a period of time, so doubt that it could be answer A. Answer D, however, has the phrase, the area was underwater, which is a near perfect match for the phrase in the text, covered by a shallow sea. This must be the answer. I fill it in and I'm done. If I didn't know the meaning of geology, I could still have found the answer by working with key words in the sentence endings. It's often more a matter of eliminating impossible matches than it is proving the correct one. And you'll have noticed that I haven't wasted time reading everything in detail to be sure of the answers. If the clues clearly point to a particular match, it's almost certainly right. Time is your biggest enemy in the IELTS reading test. Make your choice quickly and keep moving on. I hope you found these step-by-step -step instructions helpful. Now you're ready to use this strategy and all the tips to practice answering matching sentence ending questions from past papers. This practice will quickly improve both your skills and your level of confidence. Thank you for watching and I'll see you again soon.